All right, so here's the plan. Uh, we just got back from lunch and I've goaded uh, Jason and Andy to correct out a hood. So I want them to go through their whole process from start to finish. So they're gonna do you know, scratch repair, uh, you know, deal with the orange peel, deal with, uh, you know, the, deal with the entire process from start to finish. We're gonna probably have them do a couple of different hoods. Uh, so they're gonna take us through that. I'm gonna ask questions. We're gonna work through getting a, you know, a perspective of their process. It's gonna be awesome. You got a good light over there? Yes, sir. Alright, so we've been we've been messing around with a little bit of the hood here and there, but I just wanted to give you a little you know camera's kinda hard to capture, but here's what the hood looks like beforehand. You have the this area scoured with uh, some Scotch Bright, some pretty significant scratches here. I can feel that with my fingernail. So there, to just give you a, bef a before look of the, this is the 2004-ish Cadillac SRX hood in black. All right, so we're assuming this has already been deconned, right? Yeah. So, for those of you who don't know, Proficient X, Andy Ward, we've been keeping him out of the video thus far, but so we're assuming the, the, the hood is deconned, it's clean, now what? It's ready to go ahead and, and obviously compound. Uh, I'm going to go after some of these isolated scratches here um, just to make it a little bit easier. Show some of the different blocks and then we'll uh, compound it and then wipe it down and see what we got. Okay, cool. Do your thing. So I'm going to start sanding some of these deeper stuff and take the large block. This is um, part of the palm block set. Uh, this is soft foam and some 1500 grit. I noticed you don't have a bucket of water. No, you can. I, I just have always kind of just used a spray bottle. Just going in a Arizona to New York pattern. What grid is this? This is 1500. Little to no pressure, even though it, it looks like I'm really applying pressure, I'm really not. So there's no benefit to just sanding the whole darn hood? You can, you can. Something like this. I know I can compound it out, but I just wanted to blend it out just to show you what it looks like. We'll get the air blower here. Blow gun. Just kind of speed up the process here. No, I'm just gonna, I can use the roots, the microfiber pad, but I'm gonna use the rotary first. Why? Just because it's a little more faster, a little more efficient. Yeah. Lake Country wool pad, uh, Meguiar's M100, at about 1400 RPM.
add another strip of product. And then we'll go ahead and use the Rupes and the microfiber pad to finish it out a little bit better. M100 is non-diminishing, right? Yes, and it was designed for the rotary. Right, so rotary wool pad. The wool pad, does pad flatness matter as much on a wool pad? Um, yes and no. I mean, you do have the pile thickness to kind of compensate for that, but. Mm -hmm. I like to do the same process through and through. Um, we do have some scouring from the green 400 grit scotch brick, mm -hmm. but theoretically that's just a wool pad, so. That's not, not too terribly bad. Like I said, you could use the, the uh, microfiber pad and probably do just as efficient um, if you're not comfortable with the rotary. So there is some slight hologramming in there, but it's actually not too bad. It did fl it flatten it out. If you look at the, the lights in the ceiling, you can definitely see a uh, difference in peel. Yeah, but aren't we yanking all kinds of paint off of this thing? No, no, we're not. Kind of, we'll take an average reading here. One oh four, one oh twelve, one twelve, one sixteen, one twelve. 110. We're going to go over here where it's not been touched. 106. So that's a lower. 114. 106. 106. So basically, we didn't take off much of anything at all. Probably two to three microns with uh, 1500 with the 1500 wool pad and some pretty aggressive compound right yeah yeah m100 is about now were you leaning in were you applying some pretty yeah, substantial yeah. pressure I on was, that wool pad i was applying pressure just like i would a roops and just slow movement watch again watch the uh, compound uh, displacement and how it's going across the surface nice even pressure and i was mm -hmm. able to control my heat uh, with my arm speed all right, so what's what's the follow-up? Microfiber and 101? Yeah, what, what you got there? 205? I got some 101 and some 205. I'm yeah. gonna start cleaning it up, but then do you want me to start basically working this section? And yeah. you wanna start sanding the other side? Yeah, we can, so he's gonna kinda okay. try, we've got Scotch-Brite over here as well, so kinda the difference between rotary and roops and microfiber, so if someone doesn't have a rotary or have ne never used the rotary, um, you can yank most of it out with the roots. And you want me to focus on this? Yeah, yeah, just okay. maybe just uh, this area right here. Right there. Yep. Okay.
All right, time out. What the heck is going on here? Are you, what am you're, I doing? You're moving too fast, and you're... I mean, this is what I'm Might thinking. Yeah. This is what I'm thinking yeah. going in my head. For what most guys say with Yeah, the, what the heck is going on? Teach well, me here. This is awesome. What I'm concerned with and why I move very quickly is because I'm not concerned with doing a crosshatch pattern or something <clears> like that because when you do a crosshatch pattern, you become too fixated on the actual pattern yeah. and what you're working with rather than actually being focused at what you're trying to dig out. So. I but, move in a very rapid, uh, uh, in a, at, at a very rapid pace. But are you giving the machine enough time to do its thing? Yeah, I am. But at the same time, I'm basically. I was doing a couple of different things at that same time. I have brand new, uh, brand new, brand new microfibers. Yeah. So I'm trying to basically prime them on the fly. That's why I'm overloading them and blowing out and short cycling and long cycling, trying to learn the paint at the same time, and then beginning to work all the scratches out. But back to your initial question of why I move so rapidly, which is not the first time, it's definitely not the last time myself, Jay, or Aaron get this uh, remark, is the reason that we move so rapidly is because we're concerned with how much heat we're actually inducing into the panel. Most people don't realize that on ferrous surfaces, anything over about 110 degrees Fahrenheit is when paint starts to swell. So I like to keep the temperatures by how we're operating the machines at right around 95 to 100 degrees because if you start, if the paint starts to swell, the scratches start to basically swell and then once you think you have all the scratches out, it could take two weeks sometimes for the paint to level back out hmm. and then you're left with just scratches. Now, you, you haven't wiped the product off and come with new product. Mm -hmm. Um, don't we tech, don't we technically have this filled with residue and stuff? I mean, yes and no, but the uh, the reason why I'm doing that is to save the steps, so I don't have to keep on going over and over and over. I'm only using two products as of right now: a mixture between Meguiar's 101 and Meguiar's 205, and watching everything that's going on within this panel. So, so oh shoot, I don't even know you're using 205. What, yeah, how do I'm you know? Using one, 101 and 205 on the exact same pad. The reason that I'm using 205 in combination with 101 is to use utilize the water-based properties of 205 to keep heat down but still continue to aggressively go after scratches. Is that a common thing or that's a KXK not, seeker formula? It's not, it's not a common thing. It's not thing, super but common. No. It's, yeah. it's not very common. Usually people just either put 101, yeah. 100, yeah. or 205 on the pad. I'm going to do like this little section. I'm going to wipe it off and I'm going to blow out mm -hmm. my pad. And I'm going to mm -hmm. come back mm -hmm. and... Sure. That, that's the... If you're a newbie, and you're not on the clock, that's the way you should do it. Yeah. But if you've got 10 cars and you need to have a very good result in a very short amount of time, this is, this is one method. Okay, back to work. Okay. Can you focus in on this, scr I'm gonna, this scratch right here? Yep. Okay. So you're spot checking scratches. And yeah, yeah. Yep, right there.
like all this dirt getting in my new garage here. There's way too much real work going on here for my liking. <laughs> Lifting up on the edge here, away from the edge, off the edge. I'm able to roll over without so wait, decreasing wait. that edge. So you're you're coming into the edge this I'm way? I'm coming into the edge this way, but if I if I put pressure here, I can still put pressure on the edge without actually going over. If I say that again. So you're, are you rolling it up this way? No, I'm, I'm rolling it back so, because I have to bridge the surface to see that surface tension right there. And this on my pad is bridging high on the surface tension and the low spot. So I have to put a little more emphasis to get down basically into this valley right here. Right. But wouldn't it be easier to come in this way? Like this? From this way? Yeah. No, because then my pad is rolling into the edge. By doing this, I'm rolling off the edge. You can do that if you like. And just kind of tilt into the edge again. I mean, that's the way I generally do it. Yeah, I mean, either or. Whatever you're most comfortable with. Now, now do it the other way. of this portion yeah. is out besides this section over here on uh, the lint. But now I'm going to start running the edge. And you can see from where it was before how those scotch right were all the way over into here. Yeah. Okay, now it's starting to decrease into here. Now remember, scotch right uh, uh, scotch right scratches yeah. are around anywhere between four to six hundred. Right, Jay? Uh, the what scotch Bright pad the did you green, use? green, it's probably around 400 grit. Okay, so we're digging out 400 gritters with a DA right now. And we're not doing too bad. Granted, it's taking a long amount of time. But again, we're getting 400 grit scratches out. So it does take the time. The most efficient way to do that is probably to lightly sand it. Mm -hmm. I would sand it some 3,000, not to uh, change the orange peel, but to get into the scratch and lessen the scratch to make it easier to buck. So that would be normally the way to go about something like that. Hopefully you're Cause it, I mean, conventional wisdom says you just grind it away like three quarters of the paint cause you're sitting there. I mean, it's been 10 minutes in that one spot. Sure, sure. And you know, in theory you're correct, but with what I was using for my pressures, speeds and how I was moving around, I inevitably didn't shave up this, but shave off as much clear as you would think. Even though I was working that section for a long, a long time, I was utilizing the capabilities of the long working cycle of the actual products to make it feel that long. But again, we're digging out 400 grit scratches right. on something like this. Most cars don't have 400 grit scratches across their entire hood. If it was just a regular car that had the standard swirl marks and stuff of that nature, which we could even play around on one of yeah, those. Yeah, we'll do one of the other hoods, yeah. Scotch-Brite ones, 
we could knock that out much more rapidly. Mm -hmm. And also, we're working on a body shop bench, so as you know, you can see it's like rickety, and yeah. it's like you're on a roller coaster trying to polish, so it takes time. It could absolutely be completed, but it's a process. So when I was working in this area, I was working primarily with the Long Throw Mark 221. But as I started getting into here, I had to do a machine swap and start going in with the Mini, but then you saw me bouncing back into this little valley as well as I was also uh, bouncing in here with the Mini. The reason that was is because when I was staring through the product, I saw a couple additional rids that I knew that, hey, I was already on this panel, that I'll just continue to dig out that rid so it's one less one that I have to go back to and dig out. So do you, are you rolling up on the edge? So, it might look like I'm riding on the edge, but at the same time, with how my hands are positioned, yeah. it's slightly tilted about 10 degrees up, so I'm trying to focus on these scratches that were induced without rolling over the edge. Right. And can you, are you looking through this? Uh, yep, I'm staring straight through it, and hence why I don't have to continuously wipe off product and waste time. In order to target like a scratch, you see if you stare mm -hmm. right through the product right there, mm -hmm. this one, this rid, what I would do is I would come in, tilting at about 10 degrees, and focusing, focusing the pressure right on that scratch. But as you can feel, go ahead and feel that panel, it's not that hot. So that's why to further your point, your question. What speed are you on? Six? Why I come in and out of the crack. Because I'm concerned about temperature. That's the primary factor that I'm concerned about. This is what I would be comfortable with. Can I, can I grab yeah. the mini? It's better. So there it is. Yeah, it's still there. But once we were to clean out all the white from the compound, uh, it would be So that's my... Uh, Stand to improve, not remove method, where mm -hmm. we, sometimes we just have to live with it if we don't want to go to the paint job. So how do you know when it's time to shut her down? Um, you know, 10 to 15 passes for the average user is, is all. I did more than that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you've never sanded before, it's easier to, to err on the side of caution than go too much because when you burn through, there's no going back. So it's best to err on the side of caution. See how I was able to sand on that edge without rolling over the edge? Yeah. You can see the surface tension there. So that, oops, that's done by lightly tilting the block about an eighth inch in, tilting it, putting my finger here, wherever my finger pressure is is where my pressure is gonna be. So that looks something like this. Without rolling the block over, I still have pressure on the back side of the block to keep it from tipping over. And again, my pressure is on this side of the panel. If I tilt it just about down here where the center of the spindle is, and then tilt it just about four or five degrees, I'm able to put pressure down, get this area without going off the edge and coming back and hitting the edge. That looks pretty consistent for a wool pad. It's actually pretty shiny. You just have the, the slight halos that can be uh, quickly polished out. Any particular reason why Duetto and seven inch pad? Um, Andy can explain that, that's kind of his method. The main reason why I use it is because when finishing out a car, I like a shorter stroke 
So it's not as violent of a movement when mm -hmm. you're refining it. It's a 12 millimeter orbit instead of 15 mm -hmm. or 21. Correct. I believe, uh, in my experience, that you get a more refined finish, more gloss, as well as with the kind of drift car-like modifications that we have on that Duetto. Because it's a seven inch pad, it adds height to the pad. So you could put a little bit more pressure on it and it's not going to dig in as much. Gives you a little bit more control when you're coming into a curve. And it, think about it kind of like as bumper bowling. That's the best way that I could describe it when it comes to using a tool like that. But because of the, it's meant to come with a five inch backing plate, but we threw a six inch on there. So it slows it down even a little bit more, but because of the torque of the machine, mm -hmm. I feel it gives a very nice balance hmm. for what we're trying to accomplish. And also a larger pad, uh, going back to the Kevin Brown method, more surface area for more uh, uh, residue management, meaning that the uh, residue has more pores to go up into and stick to instead of essentially reinducing themselves back into the paint. Hmm. So definitely, very unconventional methods to what we do anywhere from compounding with compounding compounds and polishes and putting them on the exact same pad to be able to attack certain types of scratches to the modifications that we've done on our machines and kind of our logic behind it. And so I guess I'll go back to that there's more, uh, more than one way to skin a cat. But yeah. We have found that it is the most effective for our Met Business our models? methods. See, my the stubbornness in me, and this is me playing devil's advocate, uh -huh, is like, sure. why don't I just go grab my Maguire's microfiber cutting bat and Jeskar, yeah. hit the same spot, yeah, and can, and, absolutely. and and how much better? I mean, it, the, uh, the results are going to be better doing it this way. I mean, you've mm. done that before, I'm sure. Well, yeah, probably the best thing to do when it comes to that type of test would be to take a hood that hasn't been touched. So on that next one, that's what we'll do. So we'll split the hood. And literally we'll do it our method, we'll do it your method, see which one comes out best, uh, and with the allotted amount of time. Because your brain is hurting me because, <laughs> you know, you're like, like, how am I supposed to, as a regular dude, I'm just yeah. thinking about everybody watching, yeah. like, how am I supposed to know about what combination of 101 and 205 to use? Of course, and it is. Maybe confusing. I'm not, you yeah. know, maybe no. we're not supposed to I know mean, how to do that. It just works for the methods, but oh, you can stick to a 101 or M100, 205. No problem, it works great, it's worked great. Do one, wipe yeah. it off, yeah. do the next, that wipe is it the, off, get your light out. Yeah. That yeah. is yeah. The, the best conventional but would way it be, to do would it. Be better, would it be better to hone your skills and learn how to yeah, modify? This is, this is the crash course. This is not a regular hood. Um, it's got all kinds it's of defects. It's a defects. disaster, right? It's yeah. a disaster. This right. would be a complete respray. Right. No questions about it. Right. So we're just, this is kind of a crash course 101 of worst case scenario. Something like this on, on these unconventional methods really tests uh, where, kind of where you're at and where you want to be and where you want to go. And it, it really, you think outside the box, not because, uh, not because you have to, but if you really enjoy it, it's always fun to play different combinations. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, if I put five pounds of boost in, that's cool, but what if I put 10? What if I put 12? Right. What if I put 15? Oh, I blew my motor um, type thing. So it, it, is, it is very unconventional. It's not how everyone does it. It's not how the manufacturers suggest to do it, but right. it works for, uh, you know, it works for us and a certain amount of people, so. Cool, keep going. Okay. All right. Take Mark's still in there. 
probably from all this dust that Used a lot of uh, micro marring. That's 205. That's 205 in the pad. We'll try to blow it out. See if that helps. the difference in time I mean Andy's been grinding away over here on these 400 you know 400 grit sanding marks so we'd probably be better off just sanding it and removing less paint less effort That was, I think, Larry uh, Casilla nicknamed it, I think, from Kevin, the mow down method. So that was, that was certainly the mow down method. So that was just microfiber, correct? Microfiber, yep, the one on one and two of Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, this was destroyed. Yeah, this was a respray. And that's just compound, essentially. So put our, uh, put our meter on that. Let's see what happened. Okay. So we were... What, 116, we were 114, around, yeah, 112, the yeah. number. And I did sand, I believe. I sanded this spot sand right here. So we'll start from there. So it looks like each section is fairly consistent. Over here, where it hasn't been touched. So, this is also consistent over here. Yeah, but we weren't getting those readings before. No, we were only getting, I think, between what, 112 and 116, mm -hmm. I think. So, the lowest part was 98, but that could have been a little bit lower than the 112 mark, too. So, all, all things 
still fairly, so, so still removing, fairly consistent. So if you're removing 10 microns, I mean, that's at the limit, right? We're, yeah, we're, we're, we're pushing the limit right there. Right, I mean, where we had, could have potentially have UV issues and things like that, yeah, right? Yeah. So in order to get those ridiculous deep scratches out. Exactly. So in a, this is word, absolutely worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend the body shop, but if, if a customer wanted to say, hey, I don't really want to go down that road, let's just polish it, um, let them know the, the things that could happen, not saying that it will happen as far as UV, uh, catch, you know, just failure, um, you know, it's basically maybe saved them six months, a year, who knows, two years, it, it could, you know, could never right. fail. So it it, it could be fine. Right. Yeah, but you just want to set the expectation right to the customer, to yourself, um, so you're not crying at the end of the day when if something does go wrong. Mm -hmm. Right on your 2017 M3, you're not going to do this. Yeah, no, not 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 recommended. Right. Within the realm of what you have to work with. I mean, the readings that we took were fairly consistent. Were they low? Yeah. They were low, but also that green scotch brett's I think around 400 grit equivalent. So it's like a bunch of cats were dancing on this hood. So definitely body shop, re back to the body shop it goes, but uh, that's just the worst case scenario. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. Or the floor.